Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of an open and honest conversation about homeschooling. Today's video is actually going to cover a lot of different talking points. So instead of going over all of them in the intro here, you can just jump right down to the video description where I have time stamped and written out all of the topics of conversation. So if you want to hear something specific, you can jump straight to it. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Don't forget to leave us a comment, a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the things. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so I think this is a yes or no question for everybody. Uh, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on you because you are the only source for your child's education? No. No. Yes. I did at the beginning, but as my children have graduated and have gone on, then I have learned that I'm doing okay. So I don't feel the pressure now. Okay, where do you guys find all of your homeschool resources, curriculums, tests, etc., anything, any materials that you guys use? KathyDuffy.com. She's like a, I would say a curriculum reviewer, and she explains by she grade, really good books too. subject, learning style, or curriculum style. So I use her a lot as a, somebody who's already reviewed it, and YouTube. And I'm crazy, and I write all my own curriculum, so, you know. I find stuff here and there, online, yard sales, um, old school books, Martins, you know, whenever these huge book sales are different places, mm -hmm. you know, heck, I found, you know, some awesome reproducible math sheets in Canada, you know, at a yard <laughs> sale that I picked up. I've just done a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I like, there are books that what every first grader, third grader, fourth, yeah. five, sixth grader should, should know, yeah. should know. Mm -hmm. and commonly misspelled words those and stuff sure. like that, you say. know, I like those kind of things, so you know, they can kind of, maybe I can help focus on those areas or keep them up to par, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about homeschooling today's um, environment is there are hundreds of curriculum companies out there, hundreds. And you actually can have so much that you just don't even know. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to have somebody that matches your style of learning, mm -hmm. like Kathy Duffy, like Karen Glass, who um, can help you to find curriculum that matches your style of teaching your children's style of learning because there is so much out there today. It's not like in the late 70s and early 80s when you had pioneers in the modern times that were basically having to write their own curriculum because it wasn't anything. And they Mark were doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not this smart. <laughs> um, she's a doctor. <laughs> she's a doctor. <laughs> I'm a ninth grade dropout. <laughs> I have a GED, but I'm a nice great job now. So I need some some help. But basically, I've come to the point now where we do math online and we read living books. And we read a stack of books every single year. I think right. one of our really great resources is our homeschool group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like finding you know, like-minded people in the community that we can have those conversations. Like, what do you do for this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what do you think about this yeah. curriculum, Tina? Because I've heard you talk about this. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I always direct people to start with easy peasy homeschool. I'm yeah. like, if you feel like you're going to be overwhelmed, this woman already did all the and work. It's free. And it's free. And at least you have a starting point. It's not perfect. And it's definitely not for everybody. But it's day one, start. you can yeah. jump in and go. And I know people who use that. Yeah, we're here. I think another interesting question that I had come up, because I know everybody here, is you know i is our bit on homeschooling like hmm. religious or non-religious okay. sure i'm religious one. i'm not yeah i am i'm not no yeah well I'm that was a so. that was kind of like one of the true or false questions <laughs> that came up in a lot of different yeah. things where i was kind of researching like questions to ask and making sure i was kind of covering several different topics but one of them was like uh, a fact was that or Maybe it was like true or false. Um, most homeschoolers are Christian. No, 
No, and it can no, be a very, real struggle too. It is very well divided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, in a Absolutely. good way. In a good way because I think all of us have a commonality in that we love our kids and we want what's Absolutely. best for them. And we want what's best for them. Mm -hmm. Religion and politics and life choices, homesteading, work from home. Um, that don't work at all, or work a regular nine to five. Or create your own business or create start your own from scratch. Yeah. Whatever yeah. our backgrounds are, the thing that we always come back to is we love our kids and we want what's best for them. Mm -hmm. and, we and anybody who ever says that homeschoolers are just out there, you know, have never met one. I've <laughs> <laughs> never met one. I've never met one. Don't you want to send your kids to school where they get the best education? They're going to get the best education with me. Yeah. Because nobody is going to love my child yeah. more than I do. And nobody is going to want the best for them the and, and facilitate that in a way better than me. And yeah. we won't lie. There are people out there who say they're homeschooling Absolutely. their kids and make everybody else look bad because they really don't care. Yeah. But you just wake that, up in the morning. You have that in the public <laughs> school setting yeah. as well. And there are yeah. few yeah. kids who fall through the cracks as yeah. much, if not more, yeah. yes, in the public school setting than you will ever find in the, in the homeschool setting. And oh. possibly the pioneers for homeschool in the 80s in the late 70s, mm -hmm. when it was still illegal. Yeah. Those were people yeah. that chose a religious <laughs> exemption, that felt called to do that based on their religion. They pioneered the way for the rest of us, mm -hmm. that we don't have to be religious, that we don't have to have you know, this very this subversive and covert education system. Oh. I have you know, my best friend, she was homeschooled during that period of time. She wasn't allowed outside mm -hmm. because of truancy laws. Mm -hmm. She wasn't allowed to tell people that she was homeschooled for fear of retribution. So I appreciate their sacrifice so that today I can go, yep, yeah, I'm homeschooled. Yeah, why are you here at the grocery store in the middle of the day? Oh, my children are homeschooled. Okay. <gasps> oh, but That's then so I <laughs> what is five times five? <laughs> <laughs> you well, can stop it. Stop. Yeah. He could give you the change back because you're not actually, you know, counting the change. Yeah, you're back. just you looking just at the change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I remember truancy officers coming to our house because my parents were pioneers in yeah. uh, homeschooling. Oh, wouldn't you rather, you know, come with other kids your age or the neighbor kids, you know, hollering right. at us that we should, you know, our parents should be in jail and, you know. Calling DHS on no, the go outside multiple in the times. Of the day or ride your bike. Or... Yeah, because my parents, you know, it's like the truancy officers would show up or DHS would show up or whoever yeah. would show up. And that's part of the reason why I think they ended up joining up with the church because they were, as a group, there was, you oh, know, the strength election. in numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were using the same curriculum. Mm. So. And the same legal and, standards. Yes. So you were, you were operating as a group as opposed to an individual fighting the system. You're a group fighting the system. That, you know, you're not getting the proper education, you know, right. you should be in, your parents should be in jail, and, you know, what about yeah. socialization? <laughs> you know, I oh, 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 true or false question at the end. <laughs> what about socialization? The number one question. The number one question. False. False. children lack social skills because they aren't in a traditional school setting yeah. with other False. Children. False. Resounding. False. False. <laughs> False. <laughs> Can I say that when I was in public school, do you know where I learned all the bad things? Public <laughs> school. It it's certainly cool. wasn't at home or at church. No. Where did my son learn the F bomb? <laughs> On the playground in kindergarten. At school. <laughs> where, where is the only place in your life you'll be sitting in a room with people exactly your exactly age? Exactly your age. Expected not to speak to them for the entire day with the exception of maybe a few points of time. School. I'm sorry. How many times do we hear? This isn't social hour, people. Mm. I have told people, well, at least I know my child is coming back. I don't have to worry about a school shooting That's a and one. such. Absolutely. And them being bullied. I went to school and Columbine happened. I was in school. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Columbine happened. Yeah. So, um, my kid's going to find a bully. It's going to be me. <laughs> I think my son is more socialized than, 
Yeah, I think any child who goes to public school. My seven-year-old has some serious issues with socializing. My nine-year-old is like, hello. <laughs> we are best friends. Never best meet best. a stranger. No. Never. Yeah. I, no. I, my, girls, my youngers are more social than the ones that went to public school. The ones that went to public school had these moments where mm -hmm. a little death happened, a little grief happened, a little trauma happened, and it changed their perspective on the world around them. And mm -hmm. it made them more cautious and more fearful. Hmm. The younger ones have no fear. Mm -hmm. They go into the world with these big, beautiful, bright eyes that say, Everyone is going to love me, and I'm going to be my most authentic self. And they talk to everybody. Everybody. Talk to everybody. everybody. <laughs> I'm like, when you, when you stop, stop. strangers, no. that doesn't exist. No, that doesn't exist. And, and talk, talk to everybody. To everybody. Have a, I have a great example. Um, my older kids, they had this young man who came to our church, and he was public school. His name was Chen. And I would say to him, Chen, how are you doing today? Fine. How's your mom doing? Fine. How's your dad? How's the farm? Fine. I mean, you barely got more than two words out of him. Fine. Same age, young man in our homeschool group. His name is Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. How's your mom doing? Oh, Mrs. Simpson. She's doing very well. She's, you know, I mean, and you would have a conversation. And it was like, when I would talk to Chan, Chad would look at me like I was going to, you know, eat him alive, Hansel and Gretel or something, you know, an adult speaking to me and caring about what I did. And oh, I'm no. so, I have this routine. I have yeah. a set of responses that I'm supposed to comply with. Right. It was like you couldn't get anything out of this kid. But Ryan. Yep. How you doing, Ryan? Oh, Mrs. Simpson. <laughs> you know, I mean, he would just... And it was lovely talking to Ryan. And to this day, I am friends with Ryan on Facebook. He's fabulous. <laughs> and go, Ryan. Go, Ryan. He's a doctor, for crying out loud. And he graduated from our homeschool group. Yes. He is nice. a doctor. And I feel like homeschool kids are more than willing to share the information that they have in their brain, sometimes to their own detriment. <laughs> we're we're at the true. grocery store checking out, and the poor woman behind the counter clearly had teeth problems. That's a thing. It happens to people. My daughter looks at her and goes, so dentists might be able to help you with the teeth problem. And the woman, God love her, says, well, dentists are very expensive, honey. And she goes, well, you're nice you could probably get a better paying job that would help with the dentist and might cover insurance. And that's too much information. I'll circle back to this one. We're going to call it a priority for me. Where are you? What lines were? Yeah. Yeah. Store. <laughs> the thing but, is, is, is homeschool kids are just very well-rounded, and that's yeah. the beauty of homeschooling, again, yeah. is because they have interaction with everyone at everyone. the grocery store, at the supermarket, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. At the gym class. Yeah. We're talk at the gym class, we're talking about kids ranging in age from 8 to, or I'm sorry, 18 to 6 months. Mm -hmm. And they learn how to engage with one another rather than their six month window of age. And they're also helpful. They yeah. help each other. That makes kids. sense too in my mind, just yeah. as a non-homeschooling parent as of yet, because I don't have a child yeah. that age. age. But a stay-at-home mom, like I kind of would consider myself, like if my kid was going to school for six hours a day, eight hours a day, whatever it is, I'd run all my errands and I'd do all of those Inner, you know, and those social and those yeah. interaction, like without them, errands mm -hmm. and everything without them, mm -hmm. because it would be easier. But yeah. well, it is easier. So <laughs> then their socialization is only at home with mom and dad, and then at school where, where like you said, they're you gotta be quiet. You have to listen and pay attention. You get in trouble if you're talking, if you're talking too much. If you're doing this, you know, are you going to the bathroom? You or can't you go get, to the bathroom with anybody else. You yeah. have to go just by yourself. And you get your thirty minutes or whatever of like recess time. If you thirty get minutes it. of lunch, Ish. maybe yeah. If yeah. you guys earned it, what, the yeah. whole class because if one kid messes yeah. up, every. Everybody gets in trouble.
trouble, and there's always one kid that messes up. Right. But it's it's they it's more one so on one with your me. peers, yeah. Yeah. and you're basically being taught by your peers. Right. You're learning all this, like she said, you're learning bad stuff from your peers. Yeah. Instead yeah. of you know. Now, you had a question on there about which state is the easiest, or are there differences? Texas. We lived in New Hampshire for a while. Let me tell you how amazing that state is. You write a letter one time. You're going to homeschool your child. They ask you no questions. There's no tests, no exams, no write another letter, no dilly squat. Texas, you don't even have to tell them. You don't have to tell them. To All right, that's how it was in Missouri when my sister in law had to tell them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I had thought about homeschooling Carly when she was um, in kindergarten, and I looked up the laws and regulations. My best friend who has seven sons all within six months of my six children um she homeschooled in colorado did nothing uh -huh. there is nothing to do uh -huh. so every state is a little bit different <clears throat> every state is pennsylvania is really bad massachusetts yeah, yeah, really really bad. Bad. Yeah. ohio is very um strict you have to California, yeah, like Maine, California kind of is Maine and West Virginia, Virginia is Com very similar. Compared to all these other states that you guys are talking about, what would you say are kind of the pros and cons to being in Maine specifically doing your homeschooling? Maine is pretty Limited, low in invasion. Mm -hmm. It asks for, tell me that you're teaching your child and mm -hmm. show me some kind of progress at the end of the year. Yeah. And we, we have all these different methods. It's pretty low impact. Mm -hmm. um, and just Maine as a whole, it really does try to look out for its its, and, ten, its residents. And Maine so. as a whole, just with that very simple thing they do, kind of keep out the families that don't do anything. Sure. Like if you don't do anything, by year two they figured out that you don't do anything and someone's coming to your house. I've never gotten a phone you. call. I, I have filed my yeah. <laughs> letter <laughs> the first year I was here. I file my subsequent year letters and I file my um, standardized test results. Yeah. I've never even received a confirmation that they yeah. have been received. Wow. In I, some states, you have to wait yes. for permission. Yeah. yeah. Like Ohio is that way. You have to send off your, you have to send off a letter that's stating how you're going to homeschool and what your curriculum is about. And then you have to wait for a letter back from the superintendent that says, okay, you're approved. Yeah. Maine doesn't even <laughs> tell me that they got my letter. Nope. No. They don't care. It's, and, and let it's me been say five with the years and nobody has contacted me about anything and the general consensus is, oh, we put it in a file. Yeah. And if you screw up, like if your kids end up in the system for and all the different reasons that they could end up in the system, we'll pull that file and say, yeah, okay, what do their school records look like? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were homeschooled, but they didn't do all their paperwork for these years. Hmm, we should look into that. Mm -hmm. Let me just. I honestly don't know. Let me just say, um, in the state of Maine, it is it is kind of nice. I mean, for, as far as compared to West Virginia, it's actually a little bit better because the kids can participate in the school system sports. Yeah. Okay. But in the, you we have an organization in this country. It's called HSLDA. It stands for Homeschool Legal Defense, and it costs about a hundred and twenty dollars a year to be a participant in that, and. For anybody who is worried that they're going to have problems across the country, and they actually, in other countries as well, the only thing this organization does, they have lawyers that help homeschoolers. And we've had, I, I have had some run-ins with them in Wheeling. We had, a, we had a situation where the superintendent sent out letters that she didn't, she didn't understand the law. Mm -hmm. And she sent out letters to homeschoolers requiring more than the law of that happened was. In Maine. Well, it happened in Maine. Years ago, yeah, like years. and and I'm gonna yeah. and I'm gonna touch on that. She sent out a letter that said you have to give us this information. Well, it wasn't in the law, and all of us got these letters, and we were like, why are we getting these letters? You you're not required. To, you can't ask me this. And so one of the moms got on the horn to HSLDA and said, this is what they're requiring. We sent the letter to them. They sent a letter to the superintendent, and it was about a week later, we got an apology letter from the superintendent that said, we are sorry, 
we aren't supposed to ask you that information. We would appreciate it if you give it to us, but we're well, not we allowed right? to give yeah. it. And so you have this organization that, and I will tell you, they are a wonderful organization when we were, they do more than just that. When we were incorporating our homeschool group in the tri-state area of Ohio Valley, they helped us right walk through the charter, uh, incorporating that within the three states, uh, nice. help us pick things nice. and set our mission statement because we were a Christian organization, but we, we were Catholics and Protestants all in the same. And that was very interesting, mm -hmm. trying to come up with a mission statement and all of that. <laughs> right, but we sure. did it because we were all women Best who executive. loved each other, yeah. and we were, like you said, focused on the best for our kids. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it was, Homeschool Legal Defense was amazing. Mm. They are an amazing company, uh, organization. And to Kelly's point, in this state, you have to file a letter of intent, and then after, you have to file a subsequent letter of intent. The state required more information. When you, you can go online and file these papers. It's the first thing. But when you go online, they would require more information than what they legally were allowed to ask for. HSLDA will tell you, don't give more than what they are allowed to have, right. what the law states, because you set a precedence that they think they can ask of everybody, <clears throat> which they can't. And again, that's a slippery slope conversation. It is a very slippery slope. 